Dear guys, welcome back to another episode of our airport creation tutorial. As you can see, we are back in Blender with our cone. And uh, it's magic, we have another cone, and I created it to um, explain you some, some further things, some important things about LODs. What are LODs? LODs uh, stand for level of detail, and um, each LOD as some details more than another LODs for the same object. Here we have an object with um, a level of detail, with a, I would say a low level of detail, and was, this is the object we have created before. And we have uh, another object, which is uh, this one. It is much detailed than the other, as you can see. Uh, with the two objects, we have a problem with the shading here. We can see there's a gap. Mm, the other one is uh, really more natural. We have a little indentation here. Uh, the cone is uh, sh shaded uh, really well. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of details. And this, this one on the right is more natural. But this has uh, a big cost because the, the old object if we select the old object, we can see that here it is composed of 184 triangles and 76 faces, once 178 edges and 96 vertices. And if we select the other one, it is composed of 722 triangles. There is a big difference in uh, triangles, vertex, and, uh, and so on. So this is more complicated for the flex simulator for every, every graphic engine to draw on your screen. The more complicated one is not ideal when you have a lot of uh, these objects on the screen. So you can imagine about a thousand triangles for this object multiplicated by 40 of this, uh, of this baby on your scenery. You have 40,000 uh, polygons, 40,000 vertex just for your bones. And it's insane because an airplane uh, is uh, something like uh, 2,000 to 5,000 um, vertex and, or, or triangles, you know. And um, how can we deal with the details, but also with the performance? We do that with LODs. So we have a cylinder in our collection. This is our most detailed uh, object. So will be LOD zero and in the collection we must put x zero zero by typing this the compiler will know that this will be the zero zero log so the most detailed log we can go ahead and create um, a less detailed log so we can do this by duplicating duplicate collection and we can rename that by x zero one we don't need to, to see the zero zero anymore so we can um, uncheck the um, the view check boxes and go to our cylinder that has the same characteristic because it's a copy of the other one you yeah? know and that are to uh, reduce the number of uh, polygons in blender you can go to the modifier tab and add a decimate modifier this is the easiest and faster way to reduce the number of polygons in your uh, scene so in the ratio we can scroll down, and as soon as we scroll down, you can see that the number of vertices is reducing, the number of faces is reducing, and of course, the detail of our object is reducing as well. So for our 0, zero load, we can have a 50% reduction, which is nice. And I'm uh, okay with uh, that. Uh, let's go again with a 02 duplicate collection, x02. And we can reduce again. Okay, something like this. And you, as you can see, we have 148 uh, triangles. In, um, in the SLD, since we are far from our project and we don't, uh, we can see the details anymore. Maybe we can also reduce the number of uh, uh, texture we are using for um, our object. So in the materials, we can create a new material, a new MFS standard material, with just the albedo. 
So open the texture and select only the albedo, which is this one, which is only the color. Remove the old material because we don't need that in this object. And as you can see, we don't have the, the normals and the, the, but we can go further and we can duplicate that in our, okay. On the cylinder, of course, decimate again. And as you can see, we now have 33 angles. Very low detail, but we are really far away from the object, so we don't need the, maybe we don't need the texture anymore, because the texture is what is called um, a draw call, and the less draw call, the better the performance. I had to create a new material, so let's call that uh, plain red. And the plain red, we take out the albedo, I will go for red, a little bit less saturated. So now we have only one draw call without texture. And uh, we are done with the um, this, so we can save our project, file save, and export them. You select all the the LODs and uh, a, a, press A to select all and file export extend in GTLFs and select your uh, GTLF and in the MFS parameter you should select a batch export LODs okay and export them all and in your uh, project directory. And okay, in your new model lib directory, you will see that we have uh, some new files uh, with the name of our GLT, GLTF file, with our model file, but with LOD0, LOD1, LOD2, and LOD3. Take a look at the XML file. We have some new entry for the LODs, and this things mean that the uh, LOD0 is being displayed while its size on the screen, its bounding box on the screen, is bigger than 16, and, and so on with the others. Um, once we we go back in the sim, we will see how this uh, how this works. Okay, so I'm back into Flex Simulator, and I have already opened two crazy complicated windows to the bug logs. So if you want to open them, you should go to the options, the bug model logs. For, the, for this one, and uh, for the statistic profiler, go to the tool statistic profile. Okay, so in the screen, we have our cone with some information. Now is um, it's loaded, plus zero of three lots. And its size on the screen is this number here, is 82. And uh, if we click the bounded sphere, this is the size of the object, is the 82% vertical of your screen. Believe it or not, this is what is written in the documentation. So let's see how lots change when we change the distance from the object. Let's move far away, with a little bit of light, okay. And currently we have always our lot zero loaded because our size is 32. And I have tweaked a little bit my lot in the XML file. So I want my lot zero to show when I'm above size 32. And at size 33, I'm showing lot zero. If I go further away, below size 42, up to... Where is it? Okay. Up to size 16, it should show lot 01 so let's go further okay 15 16 lot 01 and 15 is showing lot 02 next lot will be at 2 so until 2 i should only see lot 02 it's still lot 02 Go farther away, and now it's showing lot 03, which is our last lot. Okay, 
and this lot will be shown until we reach size 0 0.5 which is an recorded value and uh, at the size 0 0.5 our object will disappear from the screen look it's still here see there passed through size 0 0.5 as you can see we can't see the object anymore so this is important because if you are uh, in this position and you want to see the cones or a small object, you have to make the object bigger. And I'm going to show that to you in uh, in a few moments. Okay, as we can see, uh, we have um, some, info some more information here about our plot mean size that were in the XML file. And uh, there is a, a red, it's a warning, and it says prefer lower resolution texture for loft below 5% size. Of course, we are away from our object and it's not important to see a lot of details on this object. So actually we are using a 500, 512 by 512 pixel image for all our loss, but we can use another image for lower loss. If we're gonna be perfect, of course. Okay, so the trick to see the, the objects from a long distance um, is to make them bigger. And as you can see now, uh, well, I have uh, also added some uh, some white some white cones here. And uh, as I'm as I'm going far away. As you can see, the objects are still there, and I added um, a red cone here just for reference. Look now, the scale is 183 for a, for the size is 183 for a such uh, tiny, tiny, tiny cone. And if I go further, now it's like is um, LED one, and now two. Now three, and as you can see far up here, I st there are still some lots to load it. Okay, how I did that is it's very simple. To make object bigger in Blender, you need to draw a big cube around your mesh, like this. In edit mode, add a cube, scale it, and give it another material I will do that again for you we'll make new material and I call that invisible invisible and the material type for this invisible will be MFS invisible and assign to that mesh in this way the mesh is bigger but you, you don't see nothing of course with the mesh that's big, you need to tweak again and I give them mean size 150 100 for the more detailed mesh and uh, up to 60 and 30 and back to please don't abuse of the streak uh, because now we are loading our mesh from farther from further 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 away okay so if a mesh is only a few polygons it's okay, but if you do this on a 10,000 uh, uh, poly hangar, uh, you know that <laughs> it's, it's not good for you, for the person that is using uh, your, your scenery. This is only for tiny, 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 tiny objects and with um, all lots made like uh, you see before. You can see I've made uh, the, the white cones. The white cones is just a, a copy of the red one I modified. The basic texture, the albedo, I made it white, and in Blender, so so all the red becomes white, and in Blender for the red cone, I colorized the material. I modified the material like this, multiplying the albedo color. So I'm uh, colorizing the albedo texture giving a color to the albedo texture. This is very nice to have only one texture uh, with uh, with different colors. Okay, I hope you, you love this, uh, this tutorial and uh, see you next time.
बाय बाय